Hello, my beautiful soul. So for this message, I want to talk about kingdom marriages. Okay. Now, the Lord spoke to me a few days ago and with this word, and I didn't immediately come out because I really had to reflect on it and and take it to the Lord as if, if God wanted me to speak on this to the public. <clears throat> so when I received this revelation and this confirmation from the Lord about kingdom marriages, this is about this is for the groups of people that are in a type of um, preparation period right now. And by preparation period, you're in separation from your kingdom spouse. Now, if you guys are in contact and you are in communication and you guys are building, then this message is not for you. But for the people that are single, meaning they're not married, they're not dating, they're practicing their celibacy, they're taking time to focus on themselves, their healing and growing a closer and stronger relationship with God, where God is equipping them and molding them to be the person that they need to be. And they are not in contact with their, <laughs> with their person, with their kingdom spouse. They're not in contact with them, but you still feel them on an energetic level. You still feel them in your spirit. You still think about them. And even when you try to forget about them, somehow they just keep throwing back in your face. Like if you try to, if you've ever tried to do any type of core cutting rituals for someone, and then it was as if they just bounced back into your energy. It was as if you thought you got rid of them, but the next time, like, you turn around and all of a sudden you see their name. All of a sudden you hear their name. All of a sudden you see their birthday. All of a sudden you're seeing, you're hearing songs that just really remind you of this connection. That is the Lord telling you to not give up and to hold on. But the Lord also wants us to know is that as we keep the faith and we hold on to believe and have faith there is no sin in having faith for what the Lord has promised you. There's no wrong in having faith for what the Lord has promised you. We should never, never doubt what no one is sure about. Gene Wilder said that. We should never, never doubt what no one is sure about. Now, in, in times you have had people where you have spoken to other people about your kingdom spouse and you felt like that the Lord really spoke to you and told you this person is your spouse. But although the external circumstances surrounding that person in that situation may have looked the exact opposite and it could be hard to believe it looked very preposterous. The Lord still spoke to you and you had this within your within your spirit that you just felt so so grounded in it was like you were you're very sure of it your intuition was telling you trust that do not allow doubt of the enemy to come in and penetrate your mind to make you think differently and do not allow the opinions of others and people projecting their own insecurities or small-mindedness to dictate how you view your situation. That's why when you have issues going on within you and a and a potential lover, <clears throat> you and a lover in relationships or anything, make sure that when you go to anybody about what you're dealing with, go to your Holy Father, go to your Heavenly Father, go to God about it, talk to him about it. Don't go to man. Don't go to these people because they're only going to tell you based off of their own personal experience. And if they have not walked your shoes, if they have not been in a situation, if they are not a if they are not chosen to have kingdom ordained marriages, if they are not chosen for this path, this unique and rare path, they are not going to fully understand. They're only going to understand from their logic. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a spiritual connection. It, is, it requires you to have faith. I call it stupid faith. You're not stupid for having faith. No, you are not. But 
The reason for you having faith, people may look at you and think that you're stupid. They may look at you and think that you're delusional, you're crazy. Who am I talking to? That you're whatever it is. They may look at you and think that maybe you're naive, maybe you're gullible, maybe you didn't really hear God's voice. Are you sure that was God? And they're trying to instill this doubt into you. Let me tell you something, baby. When you're dealing with a spiritual connection, you can't base it off of logic. You cannot because it's going to deteriorate your mind and make you think differently of it. This requires you to just have faith. Even if people think you're quote unquote stupid. I'm not calling you stupid. You are not stupid. You are not stupid. You are not dumb. You are not delusional. You are not crazy. You just are a man or woman with faith. You are a strong daughter of the Most High God. You are a strong son of the Most High God. You are a woman or man of God and of faith. And many people are intimidated by that. For you to believe in something so confidently, so strongly, so unapologetically, you center your two feet and ten toes and believe what the Lord has told you. Even if people think you're different. Even if people shame you for it. Listen. The Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When Noah was building his ark, because the Lord told Noah to build that ark. Noah was building this ark for years and people were walking past him. They were pointing their fingers at him. They were laughing at him, making a mockery of him, saying he's crazy. He's delusional. Are you sure God said that? Does this sound familiar? Yes, it does, baby. Yes, it does. That's how they did you. But what happened? But what happened? There was the storm. There was the rain. There was the flood. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights and it flooded the area. And Noah was the one that survived because he believed. With you, you will survive this. You've survived it thus far. God will bring you through it. The only way out is through. You got to continue. You got to see what the end result is. You have to see what the outcome is. Do not give up. You are so close to the outcome. You don't even realize it, baby. You don't even realize it. Thank you, Lord. You don't even realize how close you are. That's why the enemy is fighting you right now. And I resist the enemy from right now. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Ram no shake. God. Oh, Lord, I feel your anointing. 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 Lord, I just rebuke that in the name of the blood of your son, Jesus. I rebuke the any and all doubt for anybody that is listening under the sound of my voice. Oh, God, I rebuke that doubt in the name of Jesus. Come out of them right now. Lord, I ask that you please just cover them in the blood of your son, Jesus, right now. I just ask that you cover your child in the blood of your son, Jesus, right now. I just ask that you cover them. Cover them with your Holy Spirit. Cover them with your love. Cover them with your nurture, with your comfort. Comfort them in these times, Lord God. You said you would comfort us in our times of need. Comfort us right now, Lord God. There are many people right now under the side of my voice that are heartbroken right now, thinking about their kingdom spouse and wondering when is this going to when is this promise going to come to pass? Because they're wondering when, when it's going to come because you have been making this promise to them and they just are wondering when is it going to be? Where is it? And they're listen, I just pray right now over these people under the sign of my voice that they just cast all of their worries and give it to you, that they surrender. Let not their will, but your will be done, Lord God. Let your will be done. I pray, Lord God, that they allow themselves to completely surrender, to give this problem to you, to give this problem to you, to give it to you because it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's a process. I pray, Lord God, that they give this process to you, that they allow you to take hand and cover them in this process, allow you to guide them, Lord God, for them to walk by faith and not by sight. And for them to allow to the to deliver them from the spirit of doubt, Lord God, right now, I just rebuke that in the name of the Lord God, Jesus. <clears throat> you are delivered from that doubt right now. Right now, I declare it, says the Lord, you are delivered from that doubt. That doubt will no longer... No, lo will no longer penetrate your mind. That doubt will no longer come inside your mind and make you think different thoughts. That doubt would no longer deter you away from what God has promised you. I declare that in the name of Jesus. Now the message that was brought to me 
is that although you are in the separation phase, it's a preparation because God is preparing the both of you. The Lord spoke to me and told me, The Lord spoke to me and told me that he is preparing your person for you. Preparing them for you. Healing their hearts, renewing their mind, renewing their spirit, renewing their heart, healing their pain from all of the the hurt and the trauma that they've been through. The Lord is working on your person one on one. Because the Lord knows exactly that the your person has to match your energy. They have to match where you are mentally, match you emotionally, match you spiritually. They have to match you spiritually. And if they were unable to match you spiritually, God is working on them right now so that they can match you spiritually. They, God is trying to get, God is working on your person to get them to the level so that they can match you spiritually. Because God is not going to bring this person into your life until they are able to match you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Until they are able to fully match you in all ways. God is working on them and keeping you two apart. Because you are not about to reverse the work and healing that you have done on yourself. To have them back in your life just for a temporary satisfaction. If they are not fully ready, and that's where your patience has to come in, my baby. You have to wait on the Lord. When you wait on the Lord, the Lord will not put you to shame. When you wait on the Lord, you will not be put to shame because you're trusting in him. God says, I want you to trust me. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. By the time I bring this person back into your life, you all will match each other in all areas of your life where you will not have to go to another separation. This person will be in your life for good. Would you rather them come back and have to leave again, causing you more pain, causing you more trauma, causing you more healing? Or would you rather just have them stay away until they are ready to come back to you and only the Lord knows when the both of you are ready you see it's better for you to have them come into your life when they will be in your life for good and you don't have to lose them again than to have this in and out energy that's only causing you more trauma and it's prolonging your healing it's prolonging your healing if you're in that in and out energy. God is protecting you. Now, the enemy would love to feed you lies and tell you that this person doesn't love you, that this person doesn't care about you, that this person doesn't want you. That are all lies. That's lies. The devil is a liar. You know this person cares for you. You know this person loves you. Now, just because you two may not be in contact, you may not speak to each other. It does not mean that the love isn't there. Some of your kingdom spouses felt that they did not want to burden you with their problems. They looked at you and thought you have all you have so much. Who am I talking to? You have so much pain that you've endured. You've been through so much already. You're going through enough already. I can see the hurt on you. I can see the pain in your eyes. I can see the trauma in your eyes. I can feel it on you just, just by looking at you. I can see that you're broken and that you're hurt. Just by looking at you, I can see that you have healing to do. Just by being around you, I can feel the hurt on you. They love you so much that they were able to see past the walls that you had up and they were able to see your hurt. This was the person that was able to see your hurt. Other people, bad connections that weren't for you, they didn't see your hurt. They didn't care, they didn't have empathy. This person saw your hurt because they felt it in their heart. And they did not want to burden you anymore with their problems. 
they felt that you did not deserve that. You did not deserve to carry your pain plus theirs. You did not deserve to have more conflict or drama or strife in your life. For whatever situation that you are dealing with, some of you are dealing with some specific situations, some third party situations. I'm not even going to get too much into that. But for those of you that are dealing with situ we're dealing with situations you know who you are they did not want to cause any more drama in your life some of them had to go completely silent to protect you it was a well if your person couldn't talk to you then whoever it is that they were dealing with couldn't talk to you either Don't let that go over your head. If your person couldn't talk to you, whoever it is that your person was dealing with couldn't talk to you either. They were, it was like an agreement that they made. Like, you know, if this part, if for, okay, those, I gotta just say it, Lord, let me just say it. Thank you, Lord, let me say it. For those of you that were dealing with situations where your, where your person was in another situation with someone else, that they had to tie up those loose ends, that they had to finish out and complete that cycle with that person. There was an agreement that was made between those two people where it was, they may have told, they have told your person, well, I don't want you contacting them. I don't want you talking to them anymore. And your person said, fine, under one condition, you don't talk to them either. I don't want you reaching out to them. I don't want you speaking to them. I don't want you doing anything to mess with them. So it was an agreement that they had to, it was an agreement that they had. They had to play a role. And if you reached out and they didn't respond or they gave you some funny energy, it was all to protect you. It was to not give things away. You had no idea you were being protected the entire time. But when those moments happened, when those moments happened and you reached out prematurely because the enemy tempted you, it was bad timing for them. It was bad timing for all of you. That's why the responses were so off. The energy was off because it was not the right time. And they had to do whatever they could, say whatever they say to cover things up, to cover their tracks because they remember that agreement. They didn't want, your person didn't want this other person that they were dealing with to think that something was still going on between the two of you because you, there was nothing going on between the two of you. But you miss them and you just wanted to talk to them. You may have wanted to, for whatever reason, you wanted to talk with them. It kind of came out of nowhere for some of you. And it came out of nowhere for them too. And they were like, man, I wish you didn't do that. But you got to understand that when that happened, you were protected the entire time. Even when it looked like the odds were against you. Even if it looked like this was, it was, thank you, Lord. It was a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. In order to protect you, because that person could have came and listen, in order to protect you, to protect from any type of drama, to protect someone else that was not your person contacting you or saying anything rude or nasty or mean to you. They had to play a role. They had to do what they had to do. So forgive them forgive them and this is also your lesson to know to not reach out prematurely if the lord has not told you to reach out do not reach out and sometimes the enemy has been tempting the enemy has tempted you and has got inside of your ear and told you to reach out when that wasn't even god telling you to do that. it was the enemy tempting you because if the outcome didn't turn out the way you wanted it to then you know that that was the enemy leading you to do that so Trying to lead you into a trap, trying to make you run into a brick water, trying to make things just blow up in, in your face, trying to make you have a slap in the face. The enemy wanted to cause you more conflict and trauma. The enemy wanted to do this to you. That's why the enemy is, is constantly fighting this. That's why the enemy is constantly fighting. That's why the enemy is constantly filling your mind with all of that doubt. That's why the enemy is working through the people closest to you, working through your family, trying to tell you certain things about trying to just get you to give up on this situation that's why the enemy sends random people into your life that come out of nowhere they come out of nowhere it's like where'd you come from Bufu egypt you come from the once in the blue moon you just came out of nowhere you come out the woodworks your ninja and they come out of nowhere 
and they start talking about that specific situation. They slide it in there and they instill all of that doubt in you trying to get you to detour off of your path, trying to get you to walk away from where God is calling you. These were spiritual attacks. This is why this journey has been hard because you've had to fight so hard while you were healing. You had to fight through it and the enemy knows to come into you when you're most vulnerable. When you were most vulnerable, that's when they, those attacks was at its peak and you notice, you know this. That's why those attacks came. When you fell into temptation, where were you emotionally? Where were you mentally? Where were you spiritually? Were you strong or were you not as strong? If you were not as strong, that's exactly why he got in there. You got to stay prayed up. You got to stay seeking the Lord. You got to stay in this high vibration. You got to stay in the word. You have to stay prayed to God. You have to stay in God's presence. You have to pray every single day, pray without ceasing. You have to pray for God to put on the full armor of God on you because when the enemy's attack comes, it will bounce off of you. But when you do not have the full armor of God on, the enemy can easily latch onto you. Do not allow the enemy to latch onto you. I pray when I pray everybody on the side of my voice that the Lord will just cover you in his blood of the son of Jesus. I pray right now that every single person under the sound of my voice that you that you please put the full armor of God over them right now. The full armor of God right now over their bodies. Cover their bodies fully in the full armor of God. Everyone on the side of my voice right now. I pray, Lord God, that you put a helmet over their head. A helmet of salvation, Lord God. Protect their crown. Protect their crown, Lord God. I pray, I pray Lord God, for protection over every single person under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> now listen the entire time God has been working on you healing your heart healing your spirit and preparing you to, the, to be the person that you need to be to obtain this blessing you have to become it first God has been working on you the same way and God has been working on them. Now, what can happen and what's been happening here is a lot of you, God has been working on you so much and you've grown so much throughout this time. Everyone grows at different paces. Your person is at a different pace than you are. Your person, it may take them a little bit more work. It may take them a little bit more time. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And even though the Lord may not give you what you want when you want it, the Lord will give you what you need and what you want when it's your time, at your appointed time. We all have an appointed time. <clears throat> we all have an appointed time that is not based off of a calendar, and it's not based off of a clock. Your appointed time is God's time. When God says it's time, that's why we have to trust in the Lord. But what happens is <clears throat> the enemy is running rampant trying to get people to turn against God and trying to get you to instill doubt in him and, and saying, well, God hasn't brought it through yet. Are you sure God told you that? Trying to get you to turn against God. That's the enemy. When you know how God works, when you know that God does not operate in earthly time and that God brings his promises, even if you do have to wait, because there is those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and he will not put you to shame. When you wait on the Lord, he will give you everything and more for being obedient and for being patient. The Lord will reward you for your patience. The Lord rewards you for your patience. Ask God to help you in those moments when you are feeling impatient. When you're feeling impatient, talk to God. When you're feeling that heartbreak again, talk to God. When you're feeling that confusion, talk to God. You see, you think you could be doing fine. And then you come across a video on TikTok telling you, oh, well, this person hates you and all that. And the thing is, is, the enemy wants to just come and manifest itself as your deepest fears and throw it into your face to get you to deter away, 
to get you to think differently of it. That's why you must take some times where you don't consume so much. Do not allow the, the thoughts and <clears throat> do not allow yourself to be programmed because that's what the enemy is trying to do. Is trying to program you to think differently of your situation. Restart the program. What happens when like your, your computer short circuits or if your phone acts funny? What you do is you turn that thing off and you turn it back on. You reboot it. You restart it. So how can you do this for yourself? How can you turn yourself off and turn yourself on? Deep breathing. Come back to the present moment. Come back into the ground yourself. Eliminate anything that you were just thinking about. Eliminate anything that just was fed into your mind. Eliminate it. And trust in what the Lord is telling you. <clears throat> the Lord will not bring a promise back to him with void. God will fulfill his promises. And many of you needed to hear this word today that your person is not rejecting you. They're not. They don't think of you in a negative light. They think of you when they view you in such a positive light. But right now, the Lord is ordering their steps to keep their distance so that they can continue to work on themselves and that God can work on them so that when God gives them the A-OK, -okay, when God allows them to reach out to you or when God allows certain circumstances to where you guys will meet up with each other, God will do this in the most unexpected way. But God is only going to allow you two to cross paths again when the both of you are ready. In this season, get yourself ready. It's not about I'm not ready. It's I'm getting myself ready. I want you to say that with me right now. I am getting myself ready. I am preparing myself. I am preparing myself. How do you prepare yourself? You stay in prayer. You meditate. You study the word. You got to you gotta study the word. Allow God to guide you and lead you to certain scriptures that speak on love, that speak on marriages, that speak on healing, that speak on your very situation that you're dealing with. Go to the word and have that teach you. You see, the study comes by our own self-study on how it relates to our own personal life. Do not give up. The Lord does not want you to give up. The Lord wants you to hold on. Hold on a bit longer. And in the process of you holding on, and when I say hold on, I say hold on to your faith. Hold on to your hope. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your hope. God will bring this to pride. Bring this to pass. God will bring this to pass. Stay in faith. Stay hopeful. And in any moments of confusion, just call on the Lord to, to heal you. Call on the Lord to bring you clarity. Call on the Lord to give you wisdom of this situation. <clears throat> 